Science is a journey, not a destination. It's a grand, unfolding story of discovery, filled with twists, turns, and moments where we have to stop and admit, we got that wrong. Consider the humble bumblebee. For decades, a persistent myth buzzed through popular culture and even some scientific circles. The story went that, according to the established laws of aerodynamics, bumblebees shouldn't be able to fly. Their wings were too small, their bodies too chunky. But here's the beautiful part. Science didn't just shrug and walk away, it got curious. Instead of declaring the bee an exception to the rules of physics, scientists looked closer. They realized their initial model was the problem, not the bee. They discovered that a bumblebee doesn't fly like a miniature airplane at all. It flies more like a helicopter, but with a far more complex and elegant motion. Its wings don't just flap up and down, they rotate, twist, and slice through the air, creating tiny, swirling vortices, little hurricanes of air that generate incredible lift. The bee wasn't breaking the laws of physics, it was exploiting them with a mastery we hadn't yet grasped. This story is a powerful reminder of a core scientific principle. When observation conflicts with theory, it's the theory that must be re-examined. The universe is the ultimate authority. To understand this scientific drama, we need to grasp one of the most fundamental concepts in all of physics. The difference between a closed system and an open system. Imagine you have a perfectly sealed, insulated thermos bottle filled with hot coffee. In an ideal world, this is a closed system. No heat gets out, and no cold air gets in. The energy inside, the heat of the coffee, is trapped. The total amount of energy within that bottle remains constant. This is the essence of a closed system. It's self-contained, isolated from its surroundings. Now imagine you take the lid off that thermos. Suddenly, it's a whole different story. The system is now open. Heat from your coffee radiates out into the room, warming the air around it. Cooler air from the room flows in, gradually lowering the coffee's temperature. Energy is being exchanged freely with the environment. The thermos is no longer an isolated island. It's part of the larger ecosystem of your kitchen. A sailboat is another perfect example of an open system. It doesn't carry its own propulsion, it harnesses the power of the wind, an external energy source, to move across the water. Its motion is a direct result of its interaction with the environment. This distinction is not just academic, it's everything. Most of the universe, from a star gathering interstellar dust to a plant performing photosynthesis, is an open system. Life itself is the ultimate open system. You eat food, you breathe air, you absorb sunlight, you are constantly exchanging energy and matter with your environment to survive. A closed system is a useful simplification, a tool for thinking, but in the real messy glorious cosmos, nearly everything is interconnected. So, science has shown it can embrace open system thinking. We did it for biology when we figured out the bee, we did it for engineering when we designed heat pumps and sailboats, but then we come to the world of electricity, and it's as if a door slams shut. The dominant textbook model of an electrical circuit is, and has been for over a century, a profoundly closed system. The story we are told is simple. A battery or generator provides all the power. This power pushes electrons through a closed loop of wire. They do some work like lighting a bulb, and then they return to the source, depleted of their energy. That's it. According to this model, the energy in the circuit is finite and accounted for entirely by the source. No energy can enter from the outside. The law of conservation of energy is interpreted in its most restrictive form. The energy you get out can never be more than the energy you put in from the battery. This is the foundation of classical electronics taught in every high school and university on the planet. It's a model that has served us well, allowing us to build the modern world, from our toasters to our supercomputers. It is powerful, predictive, and incredibly useful. But what if, like the early model of B-Flight, it's incomplete? Here is where a fascinating and controversial debate arises. A growing number of independent researchers and physicists are conducting experiments that challenge this closed system dogma. They are building unconventional circuits that appear to output more energy than is supplied by their conventional power source. These aren't perpetual motion machines trying to create energy from nothing. Instead, the claim is that these circuits are acting as open systems, that they are tapping into an external environmental source of energy, much like a sailboat taps into the wind. This extra energy might be coming from ambient heat, radio frequencies, or even the seething quantum vacuum itself. This is a radical idea, and it runs headfirst into a wall of institutional resistance. While aerodynamics was willing to redraw its models to account for the bee, 
mainstream electrical engineering has been largely unwilling to consider that its foundational model might be missing something. If science is supposed to be about questioning assumptions, why is there such powerful resistance to exploring open system concepts in electricity? The reasons are honestly deeply human and woven into the fabric of the scientific establishment itself. First and foremost is the sheer weight of tradition and inertia. The closed circuit model, centered on the work of giants like Maxwell and Kirchhoff, is the bedrock of a multi-trillion dollar global industry. It has worked and worked well for over a century. To question it feels, to many, like questioning gravity. Second, there is a profound misunderstanding of what is being proposed. The moment you mention a circuit producing more energy than its battery supplies, many scientists hear perpetual motion and violating the laws of thermodynamics. The conversation often ends right there. But this is a mischaracterization. Proponents of open system electronics are not claiming to create energy from nothing. They are suggesting that some circuits can act as transducers, converting energy from an external unseen source into useful electrical power. A third, and perhaps most powerful reason is social and institutional pressure. Science is a human enterprise. Scientists have careers, reputations, and funding grants to protect. Challenging a core paradigm is risky. It can lead to ridicule, loss of funding, and difficulty publishing in peer-reviewed journals. Textbooks would need to be rewritten. Curricula would need to be revised. It is often safer and more professionally rewarding to work on small incremental problems within the existing framework than to rock the boat. Finally, the effects being reported are often subtle and difficult to measure reliably, making them easy to dismiss as experimental error. It takes meticulous work to prove that you aren't just picking up stray radio signals or miscalibrating your instruments. Without a clear, repeatable, and overwhelming demonstration, the mainstream will remain skeptical, and understandably so. But this creates a catch-22 without funding and institutional support producing that level of proof is nearly impossible. So how do we move forward? How can we apply the lesson of the bumblebee to the mystery of the circuit? The path forward requires the same qualities that define all great scientific leaps, curiosity, rigor, and an open mind. The first step is a simple, conceptual one. We must be willing to define electrical systems as potentially open. Let's start with the hypothesis that, just like a solar panel or a living cell, a circuit is not a perfectly isolated island, but is constantly interacting with its environment. The next step is to measure. If there are subtle energy inputs from the environment, we must develop and refine the tools to detect them. We need to meticulously shield experiments to rule out known sources like radio waves and then see what, if anything, is left. This is an invitation to adventure. The cosmos is vast and filled with wonders we are only beginning to comprehend. From the dark energy pushing galaxies apart to the quantum foam bubbling at the smallest scales, we are surrounded by oceans of energy. Let us be inspired by the bumblebee. Let us have the humility to question what we think we know and the boldness to explore what might be possible. The next great energy revolution may not come from a bigger power plant but from a deeper understanding of the open, interconnected cosmos we call home. Now it's important to recognize the impressive advancements in traditional electrical systems. Technology has come a long way, and we should acknowledge and appreciate just how far conventional systems have progressed, especially when it comes to field dynamics and energy transfer efficiency. Take modern switching technologies for example, MOSFETs, efficient inverters, and buck boost converters. These systems are routinely achieving efficiencies in the 90-98% range depending on the configuration and load. This is no small feat. It shows us that within the realm of traditional closed-loop energy systems, we've refined the process of energy transfer to a remarkable degree. The energy flows from point A to point B with minimal loss often as low as 2-4%. That's a solid performance. But here's where things get interesting. If we step beyond the closed-loop paradigm and begin to explore open-system field dynamics, we unlock the potential to integrate ambient environmental energy sources, such as Earth's electric field, displacement currents, telluric earth currents, and even potential zero-point energy interactions. These are real, measurable phenomena despite being historically dismissed or marginalized by mainstream science as measurement errors or too subtle to harness. Yet if our traditional system is already 96-98% efficient, we don't need to extract 100% from these ambient sources. We only need to supplement the missing 2-4% to fully offset system losses. That's the gateway. If we design a system that operates with a minimal input from a conventional power source, 
say, a battery, generator, or capacitor, and then allow it to couple even slightly, say 5%, with external field energies, the outcome becomes significant. That small, ambient contribution makes up for the loss, and theoretically the output ends up being greater than what we directly input from our conventional source. This doesn't violate any laws of physics. There's no creation of energy. Only a smart, open system design that pulls in real but often overlooked ambient energy contributions. The result? We've now entered what many might call over-unity territory. Not by defying known physics, but by intelligently accessing what's already there, but usually ignored. This is the frontier, field interactive energy systems that supplement themselves through intelligent coupling with the ambient environment. And it's not fantasy. The foundation is already laid in our highly efficient modern systems. The next step is simply to make them open enough to tap into the fields around us.